The following is a commercial program paid for by Little Rock Trojan Sports Properties, Learfield, and the University of Arkansas, Little Rock. The opinions and views expressed belong to its sponsors and are not those of Mission Broadcasting Incorporated, Next Star Broadcasting Incorporated, this station, or their affiliates or employees. There is a new head Trojan in Little Rock to lead Little Rock's team. He's no stranger to Arkansas and the game of basketball. He has coached in the NBA and now brings his coaching ability to Little Rock to lead the Trojans. This is the Daryl Walker Coaches Show with host Ray Tucker. The Daryl Walker Coaches Show is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, Cleve Addy Incorporated, Zips Car Wash, Glazers Distributing, and these fine brands. We urge you to drink responsibly. And Dillard's Department Stores. Here with Ray Tucker is head Trojan, Daryl Walker. We started last week's show by saying what a difference a week makes as the Trojans won two at home. Life on the road uh, for many, many <laughs> basketball teams is not very good. We went on the road, made a trip to San Marcos to play Texas State, also yeah. Texas Arlington. And so life is tough on the road. No, it's, it's tough. I was uh, talking with Coach Foley. You did the radio show last night. He was talking about 70% of the teams at home win games. So uh, it's tough to win on the road. And we, I have a young basketball team, and uh, our margin for error is not a lot. So what, what does the, the mental capacity of the team have to be in order to win on the road? Oh, you have to, you have, you have to be locked in really on the defensive side of the ball and rebound the basketball and not turn the ball over. And uh, we talked about this last night. You, you know, you're at home and, you, and you, you really defend and you go on the road and you give up a bunch of points. So hopefully uh, we feel have a good week of practice and we can get that the next time we go on the road, get some wins. How much difference does it make to sleep in your own bed, say, for uh, when you're playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Well, you, 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 you get your routine down. You get your routine. You're at home. You got your TV. You got your remote. Everything is comfortable. You can change your heat, whatever it may be. But when you get on the road, it's different. You got a schedule where you got to get on the bus. You, you, you got shoot around. You got practice. It's just totally different where you're eating at, how you're eating. So it's just totally different. But uh, that, that, all that said and done, I still think that's, that's an excuse. I think you can go on the road and do exactly what you did at home you can do on the, you can do on the road. Taking a look at highlights of Texas State down in San Marcos, and the Trojans uh, w wanted to win there. The final score was 80 to 62. A uh, good first half, though, Darrell. Very good first half. We held them to 31 points. I mean, 30 points when we had the lead. We had 31. Uh, this is a veteran team. They loaded with seniors and juniors. They've played together for three or four years. Uh, I thought defensively we were really locked in the first half, and then the second half uh, we give them 50 points, which I was really disappointed in my basketball team on that side of of the ball of, of, of giving this team 50 points when you hold them to 30 in the first half. Not looking to promote uh, Texas State's program. They, <laughs> they did, did remodeling them on their facility. Very, very nice place to play basketball. No, it's, it's a great facility. The kids really liked it. Uh, it reminded them a little bit of the, of the Jack Stevens Center, but that's Ray John Tucker making a shot right there. But it's a beautiful facility. Uh, Coach has done a great job, great job down there with Texas State, and we knew it was going to be a tough a tough game because they got a veteran senior latent team and we, we're, we're playing a bunch of freshmen. Uh, they got a couple of guards, Pearson and Nottingham. They're oh, really, really good. Oh, they're, they're, they're good. And hopefully the next time we see them, we can lock in those guys and make it a really a, a tough night. They had their way with us uh, down there in Texas. They, and they combined for 43 points between them. Yeah, they, they, they played well. Uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't play well in the second half. Defensively, we just didn't get after it. Uh, we were able to get out on the break and run this team a little bit. But uh, overall, like I said, this is a senior laden team, and we just couldn't get it done down there. You made a late surge in the first half mm -hmm. and ended up with a lead 31-30. Yeah, we, we defended and uh, uh, made some shots and, and uh, held them to 30 points, but came out in the second half, and I think they went on a, was it a 23 to 3, uh, 20 to 24, 24 minutes? 3, yeah. yeah, and that's when they blew the game wide open. I was just, I was over there shell shocked because I couldn't believe how good we played solidly defensively uh, in the first half that we came out like they was going the second half, just let them take the game away from us, Ray. You know, a, a turning point in the game at the start of that second half, which the shot clock was down to about three seconds, and guy was trapped with the ball, and he throws it out of there, and he, and he gets it to Pearson, <laughs> and, he, and he lets it fly with about a second yeah, left. Yeah, that, 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 that was a dagger. He, he comes back. He comes back down and hits the three, and the and the roof came in. So. No, they had a nice crowd in there, and they uh, they played well. A young fella shot the basketball well, and uh, we just let him get loose. And once they got loose, rated, we just couldn't corral him again. A beautiful pass by Marquise over there to Ray John Tucker for a shot. Uh, we didn't give up. Uh, we cut the lead down to maybe ten or whatever for for a second, and they just kept pounding us. And as you said, they are a veteran team, and you're starting, still starting four freshmen. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the, uh, Coach Baker made a great statement. He said, now, Coach, you got to understand, 
three or four years ago, three years ago, Texas State wasn't really a, a good, a good, <laughs> a good team. He said, now they've had three years to really be together, and that's why they're 14 and three and 14 and one, whatever they are. Um, you know, people always want to focus, uh, talk about bigs, uh, mm -hmm. big guys, uh, 6'10", 6'9", yeah. 6'11". Uh, basketball these days is, is basically guard oriented. Positionless and, leagues. And, and if you are if you are inexperienced at the guard spot, you're in trouble. No, it's a. You, at any level, you have to have good guards from the NBA all the way down to high school. If you got good guards, you're going to have a chance to win night in and night out. You got to have great guard play. Uh, your guys getting a little bit better. Uh, Marquis Noah played uh, play, played played well on the road. Play, I, I thought the I thought the UT Arlington game. I thought he just played unbelievable. 23 points, seven assists, and only one turnover. That was the biggest stat. Uh, now on the defensive side of the ball, he has to get better. Ray, there's no doubt about that. But as far as playing the point guard position, I thought that was his best game since he's been here. How, how do you get him to understand what you want him to know? Well, I, I had I had a little firm <laughs> a little firm talk with him and uh, and and the team and all my guards really and. I just thought the kid went out and really, really executed what I wanted. We didn't win the game, but he played under control, and I loved every minute of it. Uh, Chris Bankston in that game um, got a flagrant, fl flagrant two and get, got tossed out of the game. Yeah. Uh, I think they've taken this fl flagrant one <laughs> and flagrant two just a little bit too far. Man, if it's not the hook and hole, it's the flagrant. And, and, and I, told the, I told the officials, Chris Banks is not that type of guy. You know that, you know that Ray. It was an accident. And, but for us, they, they called a flagrant two and kicked him out of the basketball game, and we can't afford to lose Chris Bankston. Darrell, let's talk a little bit about the flagrant one and flagrant two. <laughs> I, I, it, it's, it's, I think it's hurting the game and, and taking a, a heck of an distraction for the fans. It's, it's, making, it's prolonging games. I mean, if it's something obvious, of course you got to call it, Ray. But some of these calls that we've been getting against as far as the flagrant side with Chris Banks in the, in, the, in the Texas State game, that hurt that Chris got kicked out of that basketball game. That didn't help us at all, Ray. Uh, not, not at all. Another thing is the illegal screens. I mean, every time you turn around, there's one of those. I, I think I think it's going to kill the game of basketball, but they don't back off of it. I mean, I, I just think everybody from the NBA on down, they want they want to see scoring, 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 scoring. And it's really hurting good defensive teams. You can't touch anybody. You can't set a screen. You can't box out. You can't do anything. So it's all, as far as I'm concerned, all the, all the officials do is spend time at the monitor trying to find, figure out if somebody hit somebody or not. All right, uh, second game was against Texas Arlington. We'll take a look at that and also take a look at the lead standings when we come back. Add shameful. There's never an acceptable reason for driving dirty. Not with Zip's Unlimited Wash Club. For as little as $14.95 a month, members join Unlimited Washes. That's less than 50 cents a day. So, show some pride and Zips your ride. Join Zips Unlimited Wash Club today. Zips 3-Minute Car Wash. Zip in, zip out, zip on. When did too big to fail replace too smart to fail? When did trend overtake truth? When did putting clients first stop being second nature? For us, never. You can't take a risk in any investment that if it goes wrong and you lose it all, that you endanger the ability of the firm to survive. And that's really what Wall Street forgot. So when do you want to learn more about Stevens, one of the country's most successful investment banking firms? Looking for something dependable this outdoor season? Then you're ready for steel outdoor power equipment. Cleve Addy Outdoor Equipment on Geyer Springs offers you a full line of steel products built for power and dependability. Trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, edgers, and lots more. Steel products provide comfort and features that help you get the job done right. Craig and the staff at Cleve Addy have a long list of satisfied customers because your needs are their top priority. Are you ready for more power? Get to Cleve Addy Outdoor Equipment on Geyer Springs today. It's not just a coaster, you know. It's an invitation. Jim Beam on the rocks. The bourbon that's been making history since 1795 invites you to make some of your own. This time last week, there were eight teams tied for third place in the uh, Sunbelt Conference. If we can, let's take a look at the league standings, and here's where they stand now. Texas State's 5-1 and one along with Georgia State. Darrell, talk about those two teams. Oh, man. <laughs> Georgia State, well, obviously, they're always at the top. Uh, Danny has done a great job down there at Texas, Texas State. 
I'm happy that those two is going to play each other this Thursday. So one of them is going to take a loss, which is good for everybody else in the league. But right now, those are the two top teams in the league right now. You got Georgia Southern and Texas Arlington that we just played. Uh, they are, they're four and two. Yes. Well, I haven't seen Georgia Southern play. Obviously, I've seen UTA play, and they're you know, not very big, but they play very hard, and, they, and they, they, play, they play the motion offense, and they're a solid basketball team. And he's, he's right now, they're the surprise team right now in the conference. I think the surprise this past week was Georgia State finally got clipped. They won like <laughs> three or four games at the buzzer, and so that, and that helped out a little bit for them to lose. Well, they're going to lose some more games. I think this conference is well balanced. I think anybody can beat anybody. I was talking to Ray John Tucker last night about that. I think anybody can beat anybody. Right now, it's Georgia, Georgia State and Texas State. Good that those two teams are going to play each other Thursday. All right, uh, let, let's take a look at highlights from the Texas Arlington game, if we may. Well, you know, that's Marquise, a beautiful pass to Kamani Johnson right there. I thought Marquise really played his best game uh, as a Trojan. He was under control, seven assists, one turnover, and took good shots and, and knocked him down and had 23 points and, and seven assists. So I thought he played a really good basketball game. Uh, I, I thought in the first half defensively we were not very good. Uh, but in the second half, we really locked him up a little bit, but the lead was too big at that time. Marquise likes the three ball, as, as every guard does. Yeah, well, everybody um, likes to shoot the three, but everybody shouldn't shoot the three. But, but he, once he penetrated a little bit, they, for whatever reason, they backed off of well, him. Well, they backed off of him, and the, but he can flat out shoot the basketball. You can see him stepping behind the three-point line right there. I like that he was totally under control. Beautiful pass over there to Nicola for a jump shot. Uh, and I'm going to say it again, you know, this kid has taken a lot of uh, – screaming from me and, and being coached hard and has accepted that and really came out and played well. I, I don't have coach in front of my name, but I, I, I recommended to you one time that you just put Nicola in the corner and let him shoot the three. Yeah, you know, he, I could put him out there and let him shoot because he, he shoots 50 some percent from the three point line and, and he takes that shot and people look like he can't make it, but he can make that shot. That's Marquise again behind the line. Uh, I don't know why they wasn't guarding him, but that was he played really a good basketball game. Too bad we couldn't pull it out because he played a solid solid game from the point guard position. Now, how did he get that one to go in? I don't know. He has some, he has some New York English on it for sure. There he is making the, the right play to Kamani. Kamani goes in and get a, gets an and one, which was big. We were trying to fight our way back into the basketball game. I, I asked this question uh, of you uh, on the road one time. Uh, when coaches switch defenses, it seems to kind of throw a uh, a monkey wrench, a monkey, yeah. a monkey wrench <laughs> and things for a couple of possessions, and I don't understand why coaches don't do it more often. Well, you know, everybody have their own philosophy of what they want to do. I know I like to change my defense up sometimes, especially if the man, the man's not going. I go to my green defense where we switch everything, or I go, or I start pressing and trapping, or I go to a zone to try to keep them off balance. Uh, that's Nicola in there, offensive rebound, and then going up and finish. He's been doing a better job of, of uh, offensive rebounding, which we've asked him to do. You know, Dre Burns knocking a shot down. He didn't make many. Uh, he was two for ten. And, you know, Dre is usually instant offense off the bench, and it's his off off the break. And that's a beautiful pass uh, by Marquise. And, you know, Chris Banks in 80 percent, he's most of the time he's going to finish. The thing about Dre Burns, uh, that mid-range jumper, he's usually deadly with that. And he had three or four in a row he missed yes. at crucial point in the game. And if he'd been hot, it'd been a different ball game. No, if chance. he could have made those three shots that he made, we could have went on the six, six, eight on run. They just didn't go down for us. It's Marquise with another beautiful move right there. Uh, we're pressing and trapping, trying to get back in the game right here, Ray. When we kind of rattled him, and beautiful steal and dunk by Ray John. And we're, we're down 10 with four minutes left, and I think we got a couple of more steals. You, you got right back in the game, had, yeah. had a call uh, that we thought was a little bit questionable. Um, well, you can say that. It, it, it was, and I talked to the referee about that. And, you know, there's so many, there's so many rules. You know, you're too close, you're in the cylinder. So uh, we just kept battling and just couldn't get, to the, couldn't get it done. I've never heard an official say somebody was in the cylinder. Yeah, well, I guess say if we're, we're, you're trapping a guy, Ray, and uh, you're too close and he can't turn, you, they're saying you're in his space, you're in his cylinder. What do you and mean so his they, space? Hey, I'm just, I'm, don't get, I'm just telling you what they told me, Ray. So, uh, Had you ever I don't heard like, that, you ever heard never that heard, before? No, what I said was I don't see anybody calling that call on West Virginia, in this, and they're in somebody's face for 40 minutes the whole game. And the referee still goes, well, you have a point there, coach. <laughs> hey, 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 to defend, you got to get him right in the guy's right. shorts. No, with no. And that's that, what it was when you that, played? That, that rule doesn't make any sense right there. It really doesn't. It really doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, your basketball team in that game uh, against Texas Arlington, final score was 82-73. Uh, you shot 44%, 24 54. This team from the field con t continues to shoot well. Yeah, we, we shot well, but it, it just makes me scratch my head. We give up 49 points in the, in the first half. Then we come out and give up 33 in the second half. So if we just would have gave up 33 and 33, we still would have won the basketball game, have a chance to win the basketball game. We didn't do that. 
uh, in that game. Marquise Noel with 21 points. Uh, Ray John Tucker had 15. Kamani Johnson had 11. Kamani's playing better. He's, he's, he's playing well. Ever since I've inserted him to the starting lineup, he's getting more comfortable. He's getting more minutes. And when you get more minutes and you're allowed to play through the mistakes, then you get comfortable. Now I can see that he's getting very comfortable now, biggest which is good for us. Biggest adjustment a freshman inside player has. Oh man, you're playing against you're playing against guys that are big, athletic. This is not high school. Most of the time in high school, you're you're the biggest guy on the court. But when you get to college, no, you're not the biggest guy on the court. You're not you're not the strongest guy anymore. So he had to figure out how to make that adjustment. And he's done it All really right, we'll, good. We'll take a pause here on the Darrell Walker Coaches Show. Back with more in just a moment. When you choose West Rock Coffee, you realize that it's much more than coffee. <laughs> this coffee is changing lives from crop to cup. Join us by making a difference one sip at a time. Find West Rock Coffee at your neighborhood grocery store or on Amazon Prime. Little Rock Trojan fans, you don't want to miss the 2019 Sunbelt Conference slate. Get to the Jack Stevens Center with your own conference flex plan or by getting your group to the Jack with some of the top experiences in Little Rock. With 18 home games between our men's and women's programs, you don't want to miss out on the action. Be sure to call the Trojan Ticket Office today at 565-8257 or visit lrtrojans.com for more information. This is our city and our team, so make sure to come out and support your Trojans. This year, make your outdoor living area more enjoyable. Get yourself an Xmark mower from Cleve Addy Outdoor Equipment on Dyer Springs. Use what the pros trust and come demo the Xmark Radius Zero Turn Rider or the Quest for commercial grade residential landscaping needs. Purchasing Xmark products is easy and affordable with their special finance offers. Craig and the staff at Cleve Addy can get you what you need and repair what you already have. Are you summer ready? Get to Cleve Addy Outdoor Equipment on Dyer Springs today. It's not just a coaster, you know. It's an invitation. Jim Beam on the rocks. The bourbon that's been making history since 1795 invites you to make some of your own. In that athletic department, there are a lot of jobs. It starts at the top with athletic director, assistant athletic director, sports information director, all, all kinds of different jobs. Uh, one of them, you just made a comment to me, one of the most thankful jobs is that of being the head athletic trainer. Thankless job. I Th mean, thank it, thankless yeah, job. because they do a lot of things behind the scenes that make everything go. And they have a real pulse for the team. At Little Rock, our head athletic trainer is a young man by the name of Michael Neal. We call him Big Mike. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Longtime Trojan fans recognize this guy, Mike Neal, played for Little Rock from 1997 to 2001. At 6'7", the native of Jackson, Mississippi, was an imposing figure. These days, he's always anxious to take part in a pickup game, if time allows, like it did Wednesday night in San Marcos, Texas. But as the head athletic trainer for Little Rock's athletic program, time is not something he has a lot of. Big Mike, as he's affectionately called, wears numerous hats. Not only is he the head of a staff of three who oversees some 200 student athletes on campus, he's head of the department's NCAA drug testing, insurance coordinator, and the head healthcare administrator. Mike graduated from Little Rock and the University of West Alabama and has a second bachelor's degree in athletic training. But what separates him from others in his profession is his playing days. He's one of two athletic trainers on the Division I level who also played at that level. Well, uh, it helped me in such a way that it allowed me to be able to relate to players in certain situations, and no matter what sport also. Uh, it could be soccer, it could be golf. But to understand what a player, what an athlete is going through at certain times of the year, during training, during competition, just kind of the mental mindset of competition in itself. Uh, that allowed me to just be able to, to come in and relate and establish a relationship and rapport uh, with any athlete of any sport. You've been in this profession a pretty good while. How much change have you seen in technology? Technology has changed, changes every year or two, I would say. Um, 
the way things were, are, were done back when I was going through athletic training program at the University of West Alabama are completely different than the things that we have now. Um, a huge focus in our profession now is recovery. Um, so there are a lot of tools and a lot of equipment that we use now in sports recovery that were not available then and were probably were not even thought of back in the mid-2000s. What's, what's the best way to treat a sprained ankle? Contrast bath. So, um, so there are a lot of different philosophies and, and studies that, that um, that compared it to, um, for me personally, myself, I prefer to do a lot of uh, ice and cold compression uh, with an acute ankle sprain. Um, I've had uh, great results with that in the past and currently as well. I'm dealing with a guy with that now. And we, right away, I get the ankle movement with range of motion and we start strengthening exercises and then we get right to cold compression. For a young person that may be watching this, what does it take to become an athletic trainer? Well, now um, our, in our profession now, everything starting in, in a couple of years here is starting to go with the master's route, the entry level master's. Um, before or prior to now, you could get a bachelor's in athletic training, and after that, you become a graduate assistant or go to grad school uh, in some other uh, field. Um, but now, in a couple of years, uh, I think everything is going to entry level master's routes. What is the worst injury you've ever had to tr you've ever seen? Wow. Um, football, of course. Uh, my days of covering football. I had a wide receiver go up to catch a pass, and as he was going up to catch the ball, uh, the defender came right across with his helmet to the forearm. And at that very instant, it was an open fracture. Um, so bones and sticking through the skin. And that was, I think, probably one of the worst. I, I have probably four or five that I've seen, but that's one of the worst. I've seen just on impact, and I was maybe just happened to be 15 yards away and saw it happen. Getting away from basketball for a second, you had a little stint and a little run uh, with the Atlanta Falcons in the National Football League. I did. I was uh, I was uh, intern there for two years um, under Ron Medlin, who was no longer there. Um, it was a fun time, a lot of long hours, long days, but it was a fun time getting to know the players and just how things were done at the professional level. You have as good a pulse of the team sometimes as, as some of the coaches. Well, that's, kind of, that's again, that goes back to being an athlete, uh, a college athlete also, is that a lot of times I'm sitting in film right with the athletes or I'm in meetings with the athletes, I'm with the, in meetings with the coaches as well, discussing injuries and just listening to the game plan because it's something that I can understand. I can understand the strategy that coach wants for this particular game and on certain players. And uh, every now and then I'll, I'll get players ask me, you know, how did I look out there? What did you see? How can I improve on that? We have a rather small staff, uh, training staff here at Little Rock. Uh, what's your day like? Uh, my day normally starts about 8.30, uh, sometimes 8 o'clock a little earlier. I come in and, and make sure everything is kind of straightened up around here and I, I start answering emails, responding to messages that I've been left, um, any kind of paperwork that needs to be done, mostly documenting injuries from the previous day and preparing a schedule for my staff and myself going forward for the next couple of weeks. And after that, about an hour of that, I start seeing athletes and from there, was, the day just rolls by. Speaking of injuries, <laughs> Big Mike's been, he's been a busy man this year. He's, he's been busy. Uh, right now he's, he's dealing with uh, Ryan Pippen with that high ankle sprain, but he's, he, uh, he is one of the best trainers, and I've been around a lot of good trainers from the NBA and the WNBA and in college uh, with Dean Weber. This guy's on point. Right, he coach, knows what he's doing. Coach, let me interrupt. we got to go to a break. Back okay. in a moment. When did too big to fail replace too smart to fail? When did trend overtake truth? When did putting clients first stop being second nature? For us, never. You can't take a risk in any investment that if it goes wrong and you lose it all, that you endanger the ability of the firm to survive. And that's really what Wall Street forgot. So when do you want to learn more about Stevens, one of the country's most successful investment banking firms? It's not just a coaster, you know. It's an invitation. Jim Beam on the rocks. The bourbon that's been making history since 1795 invites you to make some of your own. Duck hunting with Evans is one of my favorite things to do. It's a tradition in our family, and we've been hunting for generations in Arkansas. I grew up hunting with my dad. 
and now I do it with Evan. And it allows us to spend time together. It allows us to be outside and enjoy Arkansas, teaching them about nature, teaching them about the life lessons that come with it. It's one of my favorite things to do. Shop Vail Chevy and VailChevy.com today. Independence, the ability to think freely. It allows you to tell truth from trend, to put clients first, to take the long view. We're privately owned. We don't have public shareholders, and that's the very significant difference between ourselves and other firms. Since 1933, Independence has made Stevens one of the country's most successful investment banking firms. Feel free then to learn more about us. We started the show talking about life on the road. It is nice to be back at the Jack Stevens Center on Thursday night, Coastal Carolina comes to town. Uh, let's talk a little bit about those guys. Well, you know, first of all, Cliff Ellis has been a long time head coach at Auburn and everywhere else and has uh, got his team playing pretty well. Uh, they're big, they have, a, they have a kid that averages 19 and, and 11 rebounds. So we're gonna have our work cut out. It's not gonna be an easy game. How important is it to get a good crowd at the Jack Stevens Center? Oh, it's, 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 man. You guys are watching the show tonight. We, we want you to come in and, and pack the Jack Stevenson. It's a, it's a great facility. Uh, it gets loud in there when it's, when it's crowded in there, and hopefully we'll get some fans in there Thursday and Saturday. You know, there are people come to the game for the first time. They go, wow, I've not, not <laughs> never seen the Jack Stevens Center. And we have a really neat deal, a, a kid zone, uh, that, that a lot of people don't know about. And, and of course, you may not know about the kids. <laughs> no, kids I don't. Zone, you got other things to do, but they got blow-ups in there on the Fisher Court and whatever. And you bring your kids in there, and you've got, they've got people to monitor. To watch them, them right. Yeah. I knew and, we had that. Yeah. No, so. it's, it, it's, it's good. I see the kids over there sometimes running around, but the Jack Stevenson is, is a great facility. And when we get, a, when we get a crowd in there, that thing rocks and it gets loud. So hopefully we'll get a crowd in this Thursday and Saturday. Now you talked about your team defending better at home. <laughs> Got to have that this week. It's just mind boggling. We average 80 and give up 68 at home. And when we go on the road, we give up 80 and average 73. So we're back at home. We're back, we're back where we're comfortable. We got to lock in. We had a good practice yesterday. Hopefully have a couple, couple of more good practices, Ray, and get out, get out there Thursday. All right, game two will be Saturday afternoon at, uh, it's, uh, I think, 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Uh, against App Appalachian State. Uh, they're, they're the cellar dweller right now, but you can't take anybody lightly. There's no, uh, there's no dwellers. Let's just be honest about that. I, I think this league, and I've watched a lot of games, I think this league is even anybody can beat anybody on any given night. So we take one game at a time, and we don't take anybody lightly. Lightly. Um, App State is 0-5, but you can't uh, let no, that destroy you. No, you never, don't look at that. Don't, whatever you do, Ray, don't ever look at that. You just, you just take it one game at a time, but this team is definitely capable of, of beating us. Defense, defense, defense. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the name of the game, for, especially with a, a young basketball team. If you can defend, you're going to always have a chance to win, win, some, win some games. And we went on the road and didn't defend, so you're not going to win when you don't defend. Keys in the, in the game against Coastal. Oh man, if we can if we can defend, of, of course that's obvious. Rebound the basketball and not turn the ball over and keep scoring at the pace that we've been scoring because we've been scoring points. We just haven't been stopping people. All right, coach, about 30 seconds left. Uh, uh, talk to folks about coming to the Jack Stevens Center. Man, please, we, we we need your support. We have a young team. I think I'm building something pretty solid here at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. I'm excited about these freshmen. I'm excited about my whole team. I like going to like going to the office every day and work with my guys. But please, come on out and support us. We need your help. Game time is 6.30 on Thursday, 3 o'clock on Saturday. We'll see you again next week, folks. The Daryl Walker Coaches Show with host Ray Tucker has been brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, Cleve Addy Incorporated, Zips Car Wash, Glazers Distributing, and these fine brands. We urge you to drink responsibly. And Dillard's Department Stores. Go Trojans!